So when I began this process, I decided to start with the pants because they're the part that intimidated me the most. I know how to make normal pants, um, but because Sora's pants have a certain poofiness to them, I wasn't exactly sure where to begin. So I ended up buying a pattern on Etsy in order to assist me with the process, which is similar to how people use a recipe when they cook. And the pattern was only $7.50, so that was really nice. The large white paper is the pattern, and although it's hard to see on the camera, there are lines on it that show where I should make the cuts. Once the pant base is cut out of the paper, I trim it down so it's better suited for my measurements. And then I outline the pattern onto the black fabric. And then I cut that fabric out. So this is the part where I realized that before I can make the base structure of the pants, I have to create the pants pockets first because it's much easier to attach pockets to the pants fabric than it is to try and attach the pockets to like the already constructed pants. So I traced the pocket pattern onto the gray fabric and then got to work attaching them together. In total, there are eight pockets on the pants. There are three on each side of the front and then one on each side of the back. The first pocket is like your average pants pocket. The second one is a false pocket, so it doesn't actually hold anything, it's just kind of for looks. The third one is just like a large pouch, and the fourth pocket, which is the one on the back, is similar to like um, like the back pants pocket on jeans. All the pockets are larger than average in order to create that kind of cartoony look that Sora has, um, since he is in a video game. In addition, all of his pockets are outlined with something called bias tape. Bias tape is a narrow strip of fabric with the raw edges pressed inward so that it looks really neat. When I first began this project, I was trying to create my own bias tape by cutting the light gray fabric on the edge of the fabric, which is also called the bias, hence the name. However, it was very time consuming and when looking up close, one can see the mistakes in my hemming and pressing very easily. So I took another trip to Joanne's Fabric and Craft Store and purchased gray bias tape. Because it's already pressed, it's much easier to use and it looks a lot cleaner than me attempting to make it myself. And this sped up the process and saved me a lot of time and frustration. Once I finished the pockets, I attached them to the leg base of the pants. And once all eight of those were done, I sewed the back leg piece to the front leg piece. When I did this, I sewed it inside out so that the raw fabric would be on the inside and would look nice and neat on the outside where people would actually see it. So that basically finished the major part of the pants. After that, I had to connect the two leg pieces through the crotch area and the waistband. I put a zipper in just like normal jeans do so that they are just like a normal pair of pants. And
Then after that, I added elastic band at the end so that they would scrunch up towards my legs. The next big part of Sora's outfit is his jacket. I started out by using a plain black hoodie that I bought off of Amazon for $11. My plan was to alter the hoodie instead of making a new one completely from scratch. I decided to do this because 1. It's a lot easier to do and 2. It saves me a lot of money from having to buy extra fabric. I started off by trimming the long sleeves on the hoodie to short sleeves that rest a little bit above my elbows, which was about 13 inches long from my neck. After those small steps, I decided to begin with his hoodie pockets because I thought they were the biggest part of the hoodie. The pockets were already made, so all I had to do was place my gray fabric over top of the pockets. I didn't have to worry about hemming this fabric because similar to the pockets on the pants, the hoodie pockets are outlined with bias tape, so that would cover up any of the raw fabric. I couldn't sew the gray fabric down at the edge of the pocket where it opens up because it would sew the pocket shut, so I had to hand sew it, which is much more time consuming than using a machine, but it's not that difficult. After both pockets were completed, I added the line of fabric that lines the bottom of Sora's hoodie. There's a thick line of white and underneath that there's a thinner line of red fabric. I was able to sew them on with the machine fairly easily. After that, I added the two red stripes that travel up along with the zipper. This part was a tad more complicated than the previous steps. Because it was next to the zipper, I couldn't put it through the machine because it was too thick. So I machine sewed the fabric on one side, but then I had to hand sew it on the other side that was close to the zipper. Then I added gray fabric where the shoulders are, which provided no problems. After that, I had to add red fabric over top of the hoodie. Because the hoodie is curved, I had to do it in two sections instead of one, with a seam running down the middle at the very top of my head. After that step, I was mostly done with his jacket. I just had to add the plaid flaps that he has that lay across his zipper. What I had to do for this was outline the plaid triangles with the same gray bias tape I used for the pants pockets. Then I hand sewed the flaps across the zipper. This replicates the look that Sora has, but it's kind of funny because this prevents the zipper from being usable. Anyways, the last thing I had to do was sew the six buttons onto the hoodie for his decoration. Styling a wig to be like Sora's hair is extremely time consuming. His spiky hair defies gravity and doesn't act like normal hair in the slightest. There are a few materials needed in order to style a wig like this. First is obviously scissors to cut the hair. Next is super strong hairspray and hair gel. The brand that most cosplayers use is called Got To Be Glued. The last two necessities are a hair dryer, which dries the hairspray in place, and a lot of hair bands. The first step I took was sectioning off parts of his hair into the different spikes that he has, using the small hair band. I began with the short hair spikes that are closest to the top of his head where everything kind of parts. I don't think it matters where a person begins, but for me this was just easier to visualize. Then I worked my way down to the, his bangs in the front. I sectioned off a few things closer to the back of his head, but for the most part I focused on only sectioning off the front and his sides. After that I began the actual styling. I grabbed a spike and then cut it down to the length I wanted. After that, I teased the spike a little in order to have density and for it to be able to almost stand up on its own. After that, it was time to hairspray it. 
Once I sprayed the spike with hairspray, I used the hair dryer on low heat in order to dry the hairspray. This saves me the time of having to hold it in place with my fingers for a super long time while I'm waiting for the hairspray to dry. Once that was complete, I used hair gel and put it onto the very tip of the spike in order to prevent the hairs from splitting apart. A little hair gel goes a long way, so not too much was, had to be used. In fact, using too much gel will cause the synthetic fibers of the wig to all clump together and will make the wig look really bad. This is the process I did with the entire head of hair. Once one spike was finished, I would just repeat the process over and over again until eventually it was done. <laughs> 